Hey, what is up YouTube? It's Overlord here, and today I want to talk about some of the things that I feel Battlefield Hardline does better than Battlefield 4. Now, mind you, this is my opinion, and everyone is entitled to their own. So I'd really like to see you guys write down what you think in the comment section below. So, starting off, I think Hardline does fast balancing far better than Battlefield 4 ever thought of doing. Now, the reason that I say this is because Battlefield 4 had the Assault class as the go-to class for everything. He had weapons that were essentially good at all ranges, like the M16 and the AUG. He had weapons that absolutely dominated in close range, like the AEK and the FAMAS. And then he had weapons that were actually extremely good at longer ranges, like the SAR-21. It was absolutely ridiculous. The Assault class could beat most other classes in their field of expertise, and he has the means to heal himself and revive dead teammates to boot. In Hardline, that isn't the case. The Operator, or the Assault class in Hardline, is a jack of all trades and has the ability to heal himself and revive dead teammates, but he doesn't normally beat other classes in their field of expertise. Every class in game is tailored to a specific role at a very specific range. The Mechanic class is a great example. He's built solely for CQC Mayhem and does that extremely well because of two things the PDWs he's carrying and the armored insert. Now, the PDWs, like the K-10 and the P-90, are extremely good at close quarters, the K-10 having a 1200 RPM and the P-90 having a 900 RPM. Now, the armored insert reduces damage to the chest by 50%. No other class has that same ability to shred through people like that and take as much damage, save for the enforcer, but because of the armored insert the mechanic is carrying, it absolutely dwarfs the enforcer in comparison while you're comparing them in close quarter combat effectively. Now on top of that, I also feel that Hardline most definitely has a better net code than what Battlefield 4 did. Majority of the time when I was playing, my shots were always doing the damage they were supposed to, and I never ever felt cheated when playing. Now the only problem that I ever ran into when I was playing was the occasional kill trading and the damage delay for the game. At times when I was using a sniper or a shotgun, something that dealt a lot of damage very quickly, it took another full second for the server to register that I dealt enough damage to kill the enemy, which was rather frustrating at times, seeing as I would either take unnecessary damage or end up trading kills with the enemy. But, to be fair, I would much rather trade kills with an enemy than have no shots or damage register at all. They do need to do some tweaking on their server's tick rate in order to get everything down pat, but I feel that once they do, the game will run squeaky clean with very few problems in comparison to Battlefield 4. Now, in the area of vehicles and vehicle combat, a lot of people actually don't like Hardline, but I think that I enjoy it a lot more than what I did in Battlefield 4. Now, the reason that I say this is because Hardline actually placed a lot of emphasis on teamwork in vehicles, whether you were in a car or in a helicopter, teamwork was vital to your survival because the vehicles were so squishy. I promptly enjoyed this especially with the helicopter because both the transport and attack heli were glass cannons, they could dish out the damage, but they couldn't take much damage in return and required a really good squad with good team cohesion to keep it flying in the air. But in return of having to pour those resources into it, they were almost unstoppable if they had good teamwork and could easily change the tide of the battle, especially in a game mode like Hotwire. In something like a car, I felt that teamwork was even more important. You had to have someone repairing, someone driving, two people shooting, and if your team was good and smart, you would take one enforcer and one operator and put a mini bag and ammo box on the hood of the car to replenish your ammo and health as time went on. This isn't to say that Battlefield 4 didn't require lots of teamwork whenever you were having a vehicle combat segment, but I'm saying that I feel that Hardline required more of it. Now, Vehicles in Hardline can be harmed by small arms fire, so this means that infantry, especially whenever you're working against a squad who knows what they're doing, can be very dangerous to you, especially if they're focusing their fire. This also goes long and hand in hand with the fact that once people start playing more, get more money, get everything upgraded, they can actually pull out stuff out of the back of their cars, like heavy machine guns, stingers, RPGs, whatever, essentially making infantry even more deadly. And this places a very, very large amount of emphasis on having someone to repair your helicopter because without it you're going to spend quite a bit of time out of combat trying to wait for the helicopter's health to slowly regenerate, then going back in, getting wounded, and then waiting again. And if you have a repairman in the helicopter or in the car, then you're definitely going to be a lot more combat effective versus when you don't. 
and for Battlefield 4, I personally felt that even if I didn't have someone repairing the vehicles, that the vehicles themselves were still very, very applicable to combat. They still did very well, and they stood out. They didn't necessarily require all that ma uh, all that much maintenance in comparison to what Battlefield Hardline does. I also think that Battlefield Hardline nailed the fun factor for this game. Usually when I was playing Battlefield 4, I'd find myself getting stressed out or upset, having to set my controller down because I was just so flustered from the game itself. But I rarely ever got that feeling from Hardline. Yes, there were a few times that I got mad and got angry and nearly threw my controller to the nearest wall, but overall it was a rather amazing experience and I had less frustration compared to Battlefield 4. The most fun I actually had was when I was playing the game mode Hotwire and I was in the heli repairing the helicopter so that Batman Dobbins could continue his kill streak, or when I was gunning down enemies and watching huge plumes of fire rise from the car as I shot it repeatedly, killing all its passengers and people nearby in a rather large fiery explosion. In one round of Hotwire for Battlefield Hardline, I've had more Battlefield moments than I would in an entire day of playing Conquest Large on Battlefield 4. And to be quite honest, I feel that Battlefield Hardline overall has the better experience. Just because of the fact that they've changed some things, they tweaked some things, they made the fast balancing and the weapon balancing a lot better in my opinion. And then they've made the vehicles a lot more fun to play in, even if you're doing something like repairing that's simple. Yeah, it gets a little boring, but knowing that you can help out your team and seeing that you're doing a lot of good work helping keep that helicopter up in the sky really kind of does give you a feeling of success, and I don't quite get that from Battlefield 4. And even on the ground where I was playing something like Heist, it was a very, very fun rush game mode. It was full of action, and it was absolutely outstanding. I don't get that from Battlefield 4, even if I'm playing on something like Operation Locker, it definitely feels like I'm missing something. So, as again, in my opinion, I most definitely feel that Hardline absolutely nailed the fun factor right on the head. Now, the final thing that I actually want to mention is the fact that Battlefield Hardline places more emphasis on playing the objective, and they've done this really kind of sneakily, and I didn't really notice it until now. Now, whenever you are playing Hardline, the way that you earn new weapons and upgrades is by playing with a weapon and then earning money. Now, the way that you earn money is by either killing people, or vehicles for that matter, and then playing the objective. You get a lot more cash for playing the objective than you would killing someone, depending on what game mode you're playing. If you're playing something more vehicle oriented, like Hotwire or Large Conquest, then playing the objective, capturing the points, and other whatnot is going to earn you so much money. If you're playing Hotwire, you're walking around on the ground, you're just killing people, and you blow up a few cars here and there, you're most likely going to end up with, say, anywhere from like $5,000 to $8,000 by the end of the round if you do really well. If you're actually playing the objective and you're doing really well and you blow up a few cards here and there, just as you would if you were on the ground, then you're most likely going to earn over $10,000 per round, which is really good. And it really emphasizes people to hop in those vehicles and try and stay alive as long as possible because they want that cash. They want to be able to upgrade their weapons and upgrade their vehicles. And a lot of people actually didn't like the prospect of having to uh, buy your weapons and upgrade them with cash because they thought it was really newbie for whatever reason. But to be honest, I really like how they've done things. I think it's a very, very good way of emphasizing both teamwork and playing the objective. Just because it rewards so much more for playing the objective than it does getting kills. So uh, because of this, I've actually seen quite a few people, even if they're playing something like a sniper in game, they will play the objective more aggressively. They'll suppress people, they'll start moving up closer to the objective uh, and trying to pick people off. And it really has helped quite a bit. I mean, in Battlefield 4, I would see so many times snipers sitting at the back of the spawn on something like Rush, and they're just trying to pick people off. And there's like four or five guys in the back of the spawn trying to do that, and then another like two up near the objective actually trying to help out on the objective instead of trying to sit back and earn kills without dying. And in Hardline, as again, even if they are playing the snipers, they're playing more aggressively, really up near the objective, really doing their job, um, placing more of an emphasis on distracting the enemy, or perhaps taking them out wherever they're capturing an objective. So, I really enjoy that. I've seen a lot more teamwork, a lot more team communication in-game, and more objective playing in Hardline, at least in, say, a whole day of Hardline than I have in a week of Battlefield 4, or even Battlefield 3 for that matter. 
and that is absolutely amazing to me and I really promptly enjoy it. The only thing that I'm worried about with this is once people start earning a lot of money, they're going to kind of tamper off on the objective playing and they're not going to play the objective quite as much because they've gotten all the stuff that they wanted. They've got all the weapons, all the gear, and just essentially, as again, all the stuff that they want and all the stuff that they need. So I could see them, you know, making a patch where you earn slightly less money, taking you a little bit longer uh, to get the stuff that you want. I could see that going a long way uh, into the longevity of the game. So I want to know what you guys think of my top five list and what you guys think they should improve on or what were your favorite aspects of Battlefield Hardline. This is Overlord signing out and I will see you guys next time.